Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel and today we're diving into a brand new 2025 study published in Sports Medicine that explores whether doing cardio before weight training can help older adults build more muscle. The paper is by Vets and colleagues and is titled Aerobic Exercise Preconditioning Does Not Augment Muscle Hypertrophy During Subsequent Resistance Training Exercise in Healthy Older Adults. Always a mouthful, let's dive in. So let's start by understanding the rationale behind the study. So as we age, it's common for our muscles to lose size and strength. This age-related decline in muscle is called sarcopenia and it's not just about getting weaker. Sarcopenia increases the risk of falls, frailty, metabolic disorders like type 2 diabetes, and even early mortality. And because of this, sarcopenia has actually been classified as a disease since 2016. Now the gold standard for combating sarcopenia is resistance training, which is basically lifting weights. It's proven to help not only maintain muscle, but also drive growth in older adults. But there's a catch. Older people don't typically respond to weight training as robustly as us younger folks. Now, it's been demonstrated in some research that some older adults barely gain any muscle mass at all, even after a solid resistance training program. So that's where the present study comes in. Researchers have been trying to figure out why there's so much variability in how older adults respond to resistance training. One proposed theory is thought to be due to the reduced capillarization and muscle blood flow, which is also known as perfusion. You see, your muscles need a good blood supply to deliver oxygen, nutrients, and various anabolic signals, and to clear the metabolic waste products. But with aging, our blood flow declines and older muscle tends to have fewer capillaries, which are those tiny little vessels that feed individual muscle fibers. Previous research by the same group of individuals found that older adults with low muscle capillarization showed little to no hypertrophy adaptation after resistance training. And this raises an interesting question. So what if we increase capillarization first? Could that potentially set the stage for better muscle growth? So in this study, the researchers wanted to test a specific strategy called aerobic exercise preconditioning. The idea is that before starting a strength training program, older adults would first do several weeks of aerobic exercise, like cycling or elliptical training, or any type of cardiovascular exercise, to help improve capillarization and thus achieve better blood flow. The hypothesis was if you increase the number of capillaries in the muscle through cardio first, you'll improve nutrient delivery and clearance, leading to more muscle growth once you start lifting weights. It's a smart idea and it makes sense biologically speaking, but does it actually work? So let's take a look at the methods. What did the researchers do? So to test out this theory, the researchers designed a controlled trial involving 34 healthy older adults aged around 71 years. All participants were living independently and had not participated in any structured exercise training programs within the last five years. They were randomly split into two groups. One group did eight weeks of aerobic exercise before starting the resistance exercise program. The other group did no training for those eight weeks and then they started the training directly. When it comes to the aerobic preconditioning group, the participants performed eight weeks of supervised aerobic exercise three times per week. The workouts included cycling and elliptical training at a moderate intensity, around 65% of their VO2 peak. Sessions lasted for about 45 minutes, which included their warm ups and cool downs and the exercise intensity was adjusted to ensure participants worked hard enough without overexerting themselves. The control group, on the other hand, performed no structured exercise for the first eight weeks. The participants were simply asked to maintain their normal activity levels. After the first eight weeks, both groups then completed the same 12-week resistance training program, which included three resistance training sessions each week. Lower body exercises included the leg press and the leg extension every single session. Upper body exercises included the chest press, rows, the shoulder press and lat cool downs. Most exercises included three to four sets working up to 80% of their one rep max. And weights were gradually increased over time as participants got stronger. Now the researchers collected quite a bit of data at three key time points. 
First was before the study at baseline, then after the first eight weeks, and then after the full 20 week intervention. Now, some of these measures included muscle biopsies from the thigh to analyze muscle fiber size and capillarization, leg muscle volume using MRI scans, body composition using DEXA, strength testing using a one rep max on the leg press and leg extension, aerobic capacity using VO2 peak testing, microvascular perfusion using contrast enhanced ultrasound and Doppler flow measurements. Now in English, this just means measuring blood flow in the small vessels using an ultrasound with a contrast dye and some fancy technology. Physical function tests like grip strength, gait speed, and a sit to stand performance. And lastly, diet and physical activity logs were used to ensure nothing else changed during the study. So in short, the methods were incredibly rigorous, very comprehensive and very well controlled, giving the researchers a detailed look at both the structural and functional changes in the muscle and setting the stage for some very interesting results. So what did they find? Well, after eight weeks of cardio, the aerobic group showed a significant increase in capillaries around both type one and type two muscle fibers. Type one fibers increased by 19% and type two fibers increased by 35%. This means that the aerobic training was effective at enhancing the blood vessel network in the muscle tissue, which is exactly what the researchers were aiming for. But here's the twist more capillaries didn't lead to more muscle growth. After both groups completed the same 12 week resistance training program, thigh muscle volume increased in both groups, but there was no statistical difference between the two conditions. Type one and type two muscle fibers also increased slightly in both groups, but again, there were no differences between the aerobic and the control group. The same thing for lean mass and overall muscle hypertrophy. Both groups improved modestly, but the group undertaking the aerobic preconditioning didn't get greater results. So in other words, the cardio didn't give anyone a muscle building advantage. So what can we take away from this data? The idea was that improving blood flow before lifting weights might prime the muscle to grow more. But in this study, that didn't pan out as the researchers had predicted. Despite the aerobic training improving the blood supply to the muscles, it didn't translate to extra muscle gains from weightlifting. This suggests that capillarization isn't the limiting factor, or at least not for these healthy older adults during the timeframes in which they were studied. The participants were still able to respond to the resistance training program just fine, even without the cardio boost. Now, I was eager to review this new paper because in volume one, issue five of Be A Brain, our monthly research review, we reviewed some research that showed the possibility that muscle growth is limited by muscle capillarization. In short, a secondary analysis provided data to suggest that some of the anabolic resistance or difficulty in achieving growth observed with aging may be explained by decreases in capillarization. And this led us to suggest in that issue of Be A Brain that increasing your steps each day may increase capillarization, which may enhance muscle hypertrophy, particularly for older adults. That said, the findings of this new study may challenge our conclusion, or at least a little bit. And what I mean by that is it is possible that participants in the present study did not have compromised capillarization to the point of impacting hypertrophy in the first place. Thus, it may be possible that aerobic preconditioning would have a more profound effect in a non-independent living or sedentary population. But further research will be necessary to further understand this relationship. But before I move on, I want to make it abundantly clear that aerobic training is not a complete waste of time. It has numerous other health benefits like cardiovascular fitness, better glucose metabolism, and better overall improved health and well-being. But it probably doesn't enhance muscle hypertrophy when combined in a sequential way like this, at least not in the short term in these independent living older adults. So if your main goal is muscle growth in older age, then resistance training is still king. And it's possible cardio will help through increased capillarization but this was not supported over the short term in this 2025 intervention. So what are some key takeaway points? Well, according to the present study, cardio does improve muscle capillarization, 
but that doesn't necessarily help with building muscle when lifting weights, at least not in the short term. Resistance training on its own remains highly effective for older adults wanting to maintain strength and muscle mass. And the idea that we can help prep the muscles for growth with cardio might need to be rethought, or at least in healthy aging populations, over a relatively short period of time. Now, all this to say, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you have questions about today's topic, please feel free to drop me a question in the comment section below. And for more evidence-based nutrition and training videos, make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube channel. And last but not least, for evidence-based training program focused on building muscle and getting stronger, check out my app, Be A Fit. It offers expertly designed workouts backed by science to help you make real progress towards your goals. To get started, head over to my website or download it today on Android or iOS.